Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Buenos dias. Welcome to our Spanish service at 11 o'clock. <laughs> si. That's all I got. Uh, good morning, Crossroads. My name is Marcus, the lead pastor. Welcome to our Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day. We all have people that we love and um, you know, who've made the ultimate sacrifice, who've gone before us, and we appreciate that. We're thankful uh, for that. We thank God for the freedom that we get to Amen. be in this place, in this hour, in this season of life, in this city, to proclaim the good news. Amen? Amen. Full of gratitude. I'm so thankful for that. This morning, um, we're going to continue in our series. It's called Joy in the Morning, uh, or the Summer of Joy. Today's message is called Joy in the Morning. How many of you guys wake up with individuals who just always have joy in the morning, regardless of the chaos that happened the night before? Isn't that so frustrating? <laughs> and Nadia wakes up, she's like, always, always Tigger. And I'm like, ah. It's like, I just want to be Pooh. I just want to be Eeyore today, okay? Leave me alone. No, she's, I'm just blessed to have a wife that she's always optimistic. We need a little bit of holy optimism in our lives. Amen? And so this whole series, um, it's basically on the book of Philippians, and the underlying theme behind all of it is joy. Joy in the middle of the circumstances, regardless of what it is, good or bad, you can maintain joy in the middle of whatever you're facing in life. The Apostle Paul is actually in prison. And that's kind of our prayers. Like we, I told Joel, I said, you know, we're going to be doing Philippians, and the theme is joy. He goes, you know what's going to come with that, right? He says, what? He goes, trials. It's like, oh, man. It's like, you know, for real. It's what happens. And I see some of that already taking place. But learning, having the opportunity to maintain your joy at, at, at a deeper level, uh, regardless of the circumstances you're facing, is character building, is good for us. It's spinach for us. It's broccoli for us. Okay? And so the apostle Paul is in prison, chained with individuals and he never corrects, they, he loves these people. Why? Because they pray for him and they actually served him and supported him while he was in prison when no one else would. So he has a heart full of gratitude of what's taking place right here. And that's kind of been our prayer for this whole uh, summer in this series is that God would be the joy of your, he would maintain your joy in the middle of whatever you're facing in life. That he would become the joy of your strength. Amen? That you and I would learn how to count it all joy when we fall into the various trials, that he would restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Anybody ever uh, remember whenever you first came to Christ that just the joy and the beauty that was going on on the inside, nothing ever changed out here, but man, just the beauty inside was absolutely amazing, isn't it? Then somehow or another over time, the enemy tries to come in or we'd give it away, we'd give our, our joy away, give away that song that's inside of us. And then when we see other people full of joy, it's like, that'll go over. That'll, that'll wear out. No, we should be able to maintain our joy throughout our whole shelf life as a follower of Jesus. So we need that. We used to sing songs like that when we were kids. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Where? Oh, my God. Where? Down in my heart. I already told you. Stop singing. There's other ones. There's a bunch of other songs. He goes, remember... Uh, Oh, Daryl Evans, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain for the joy of the Lord. Amen. Some of our oldest, older folks, like Three Dog Night, you remember that song? Joy. Dang, a bunch of old guys here. Oh, yeah, David, that's you. Or even go further than that, the Beatles song. Remember that one? Here comes the sun. It's going to be okay. Akuma Matata. It's going to be okay. You're all right. It's going to be okay. The stuff that you're facing right now, we have to pass through it. And remember, you're going to pass through it. You're going to get over to the other side. And like we said last week, rather than ask yourself, man, get me out of here. Ask God, God, what do you want me to get out of here? And watch him move and work in your heart and your soul. Get the nugget that you need to hold fast to move forward. Another opportunity will come again later as well. And we'll just continue to grow from glory to glory. Amen? So this whole idea, today's subject is the idea of joy in our lives. Joy in the morning. I heard about a teacher who went and told the students to go home and look for something exciting in their house, something that, you know, just kind of stood out and come back tomorrow and share this excitement. 
So the next morning comes up, little Johnny wants to go first. So he raises up his hand, he goes to the chalkboard, and he puts one dot in the board, goes back to his seat. And the teacher's like, okay, so what is that, little Johnny? And he goes, well, what's so exciting about, he goes, well, it's a period. He goes, well, what's so exciting about a period? He goes, I really don't know. He goes, all I know is that we woke up this morning, my sister tells everyone that she's missed her period, and dad passes out, mom has a heart attack, and the neighbor starts running. (laughs) Some of you guys will get that. (laughs) This morning, I do not want to begin with a period. I want to begin with a question, Mark, a question. Is there enough evidence in your life to pronounce you guilty as a follower of Jesus? Is there enough evidence in your life, if 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 you're gonna get a a jury and they're gonna look at your life for one day, is there enough evidence to pronounce you guilty of being a follower of Jesus? What does that look like? Well, thank you for asking. One, I I found, there's really three, probably more, we can make it up, just tell them I'll be back. (laughs) One is peace, two is a hunger for God's word. Okay, or one is a hunger for God's word. Man, just, there's just something about uh, the evidence. When I first came to Jesus, there was something that happens. Like I created, God created a hunger. There's like a, an emptiness that, it needed, that could only be filled from reading God's word. As a matter of fact, when I read, when I was addicted to craziness, um, I tried to kick the habit. I couldn't do it. Man, I tried over and over. I would throw my needles away. I threw all kinds of stuff away just to try to get freedom. I could never find freedom. I would only find my way back into bondage. And somebody tricked me into doing a Bible study and got the Bible out. And I opened up the Bible. And when I read the Bible, it said, before you call, I will answer. While you're still speaking, I will hear. Bam. I didn't know what that meant. But God did something in that moment. In that moment, the power of God comes in and just breaks, literally just destroys and shatters the addictive uh, for that craving, for the meth and all that other stuff. It just immediately went away. And I, and I hadn't come back since. And I'm like, what is going on here? I was in shock. My wife was in shock. She thought I was ODing, actually. Because I just got up, went down to the, to the bedroom, and I just started weeping, just crying. He goes, what's wrong with you? He's like, I don't know. I said, it's in this book. Something's in this book. And from that day to this, it's still in this book. The freedom that we need still comes from this book. Truth comes from this book. Freedom comes in this book. The journey to freedom cannot be um, experienced without this book. Period. So that's why I encourage you guys, get a hold of the word of God. Let, Let the word of God be first in your life. Just read one sentence a day. Just read a passage because every single word is a seed, an eternal seed that needs to be planted in your soul. God will take care of it. God will do the increase. God's building his church. God was building you. That's right. Amen. But he always does it in alignment with his word. So that's one of the, one of the primary uh, uh, evidences of a follower of Jesus is that he has a hunger for God's word. Are you hungry? Jesus said, if you come to me, you'll never thirst again. You'll never hunger again because I am the bread of life. I'm the manna that you're looking for. Everything else is a counterfeit. That gal's a counterfeit. Oh, but this guy is awesome. He's amazing. He's got a six pack. No, he's got a keg. You just don't see it yet. He's a knucklehead. He's going to be on the top 10 most wanted later on. Just hold fast to me. I am your husband right now. Right, Kim? I just heard your voice. Hold fast to the word of God. Hold fast to him. He is everything that you need. Uh, First Peter says it this way, like a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. So one of the evidences is, it, is God's word is a, a dominating hunger factor in your soul. If it's not, it's okay. Just get back in there, start reading it. Ask God for hunger for his word. That's connected to your freedom for sure. The second evidence is the one I want to look at today is joy. Say joy. Joy, when you, when you came to Christ, he gave you a new birth. He gave you a new spirit. He gave you a new heart. I will give you a new heart. One that, has my desires in it, not the selfish carnality that you've been experiencing all your life. Something takes place 
Romans says it this way, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not the stuff that we feed on this earth. It's righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? Anybody just get irritated by joyful people? I love hanging around joyful people, but sometimes it's too much, right? You need to be sad. <clears throat> but joy is an experience that you and I, whenever I came to Christ, man, I was so full of gratitude, so full of joy. I loved everybody, even my enemies, even now these ex-boyfriends, they just, I was just filled with love for them. Like, I can't do anything bad to them. I wanted to ruin their lives. But the joy that he put inside him was like, man, I love you. Dude, what's wrong with you? He's like, I don't know, man. I just love you. <laughs> and it was like sincere. It was like, man, I, all of a sudden I saw their lives with eternity in mind. Everything all of a sudden was connected to something eternal. And I realized that this earth has nothing to offer us. Nothing. But whatever this was... This is what satisfied. This is what I needed. I didn't know what that was, but it was, an, a, a, it was a person. Because as I dove into the word, I didn't look for a passage. I found a person. His name was Jesus. Amen. And Jesus all of a sudden started breaking and helping me and, and just coaching me. And, and then what came out of it was joy. I was just so happy for everything. When I, when I met this gentleman, he says, hey, I need you to, you know, I barely met this gentleman at a, at a, at a bookstore. He says, I need you to come to my office and I, I want to pray with you. So they, I went to a, a downtown office with a storefront window and they sat me on a chair, called it the hot seat. I'm like, I don't know who these guys are. Spanish guy, truck driver, Christian man, loves Jesus. He thought he knew me. He was like, hey, brother, I love you. I was like, who are you? And so he goes, I want you to, I want to pray with you. So he brings another gentleman who's another older gentleman, Catholic man but love Jesus. And then he brings this really tall white dude who was an albino. He's like really, not that that matters, but still, he was just like weird. He, looks, he looked weird. I'm like, what is, what's going on here? I've never been prayed for. The only prayer I knew is our Father who art in heaven, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so they sat me down. The power of God comes. I didn't know what that was, but the power of God comes on me, middle downtown. And I'm like, what is happening here? I want to say something, but I didn't know what to say. And they prayed for a while. All of a sudden, this, the albino guy just starts praying another time. I'm like, what the heck is happening here? But it, I wasn't scared. It was just different. It's like, what is going on? It's like, I knew I needed to be there. And after that, they left me. It's like, okay, thank you. And I walk out of the door, and I'm just overwhelmed with the presence of God. All I could say was, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And I don't even know if I ever heard the words, praise God. But I kept saying, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Walking out the door, literally for the next three or four hours, those are the only words I said. Walking around downtown, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's going on here? What's... And I'm sure people saw me at that time. They said, there he is, back on drugs again. <laughs> it's probably crazy, man. But there was just something so deep and so moving that I'm so thankful that it never left. It was just something that's just like a deep well that this earth can't touch. Nothing can touch. Yeah. The closest thing that comes to this is me in communion with my, with my wife. It's how beautiful it is. And when that's separated, it stings. It hurts. But this over here, you want to maintain. You know that, you know, you've caused some stuff here, but there, he's still for you. He's still for you. And it's just a beautiful sense of joy. And so that's what I want to look at. The subject this morning is joy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And because the world can't, didn't give it to me, the world won't take it away. Amen. It can't take it away. I can give it away, but I'm not going to do that, right? We take off right after. I want to go visit my aunt in Dallas. I'm all happy. I would never go drive to Dallas to go visit my aunt, really. But I wanted to see her. Why? Because there's something inside. On the way out there on uh, 35, I get stopped by police and I got a ticket, speeding ticket. But man, I was so excited to meet a police officer and not run away from him. I'm like, yeah, hey. And so he gave me a ticket. I was like, oh, thank you, sir. He goes, yeah, I'm guilty. He goes, I was speeding. I'm sorry. He goes, I was just, you know, I'm in love with the Lord and I'm going to see my aunt. He goes, he's like weird. He's like, what's wrong with this guy? He looks like a mafia guy, but he's all happy and stuff. Something different. And so there's just a beautiful moment of joy, and I just, it's just kept 
growing and growing. So this morning, we're going to take a look at some passages of Scripture. I'll make some comments, but that's the idea about joy in your soul. We need a little bit of joy in our lives. Turn to your neighbor, smile at him real quick. <laughs> it's awkward. <laughs> All right. We don't do that Sunday. Okay, verse 12, it says, I want to report to you something, friends. Paul's writing, Philippians, they, he, is, he loves the Philippians. He's, he's not correcting them. There's not one word that talks about sin. He's not admonishing them. He's not doing any of that. He's loving, he's embracing them. He's thanking God for them. Why? Because they supported him and they pray for him. He's very, very full of gratitude in this whole deal. And he says, I want to report something to you, my friends, that my imprisonment here has had the opposite. You might think that I'm feeling bad and it's, it's weak in here and it's just real heart, you know, heartfelt and sorrow, I'm sorrowful. No, he goes, it's had the opposite effect of its intended effect. Instead of being squelched, the message has actually prospered. He goes, and all the soldiers here and everyone else too, has found out that I am in jail because of this Messiah. I talked about last week, like joy makes a demand in your spirit to reframe your situation. It, it just makes a demand to, to reframe it. It's like you can buy into that or you can hold fast to the truth. <clears throat> he goes, I'm in jail because of all this thing. And the, the second thing that it does, it, 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 it also provokes um, a witness to others. Because notice that the Roman, the Roman guys, they're, they're, they started getting curious. Like, who is this guy? He would hear their, they would hear his story and it would provoke something. The spirit, only the spirit of God could do that. We don't have any evidence of that, but later on we see, you know, the Philippian church grow and all kinds of stuff took place. And now they've learned all about him. And not only that, but most of the followers of Jesus have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever, speaking out fearlessly about God and about the Messiah. It matters. Our witness and how we maintain our joy in the midst of the trial matters. It has an impact in people's lives. For the believer, it brings confidence and boldness. For the outsider, it brings curiosity. Like, what is going on here? What's happening? There's something different about these guys. And it's not just your outer looks. It's an inward thing that's taking place that people see. Because it's true that some here preach Christ because of what was taking place. And Paul's in prison, other individuals, some good, some evil, were trying to take advantage of the situation. He goes, some preach Christ here with me, uh, with me out of the way. They think they'll step right into the spotlight. But others do it with the best heart in the world. One group is motivated by pure love, knowing that I'm here defending the message and I want any help, I'm wanting to help. The others now that I'm out of the picture are merely greedy, hoping to get something out for themselves, out of it for themselves. Their motives are bad. They see me as their competition. And so the worse it goes for me, the better they think for them. What's wrong with these people with bad motives? Because what do you do with individuals? You see them doing the right thing, but for the wrong reason. That's where Paul is at. Well, some doing it are good or for the good reason. The other ones are not doing it, doing it for the bad reason. What do you, how do I respond to those? How do you respond to those individuals that are crazy and you want to, they're doing right things but with wrong hearts? The question is, how do you know they have a wrong heart? All of a sudden, you find yourself in a place of judgment. Now, there should be, there's probably evidence of it, but initially there's not. And so Paul said, goes, Ben, how do I respond to those kind of folks? And here's how Paul responded. He goes, I don't really care about their motives because that's none of my business. He says, I don't really care about their motives, whether mixed, bad, or indifferent. Every time one of them opens his mouth, Jesus is being proclaimed. And that really is what matters. So I just cheer them all on, and I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Well, how is it going to turn out? Well, I have two things that I know. One, that the Spirit of God is the supply that I need to help me navigate through whatever goes on in life. Two, I have you guys praying for me. And that's the confidence that he had. He says, man, I'm not going to judge anybody. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, don't judge. First Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter says, love never, you know, presumes people's motives. It looks for the best in others. Jesus said, before you start trying to take out a law, you know, a thing in somebody else's eye, make sure that you take care of the stuff in your eye, right? So he goes, I'm just going to leave judgment up to him. My purpose here and my mandate is to proclaim this message, to live for him and to die for him. I love that about the Apostle Paul. And he goes on to, to say this, 
through your faithful prayers and the, gener and the generous response of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do in and through me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue my course in jail. <laughs> right? It's like, what's wrong with this guy? This guy's psycho. He needs to be in a psychiatric ward. No. He's a follower of Christ. And God graces us in moments like that. I love what the Spirit of God does in moments like that. Isn't that beautiful? And he goes on and he goes, I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. Regardless of whether I live or die, they didn't shut me up. They gave me a platform. Oh, you see the reframing? He goes, alive, and I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his prize. Life versus even more life, I can't lose. For me to live, it's for your benefit. If I die, I'm going to go see Jesus. Man, I am so there right now. The only reason I'm here on this earth is because I want to do whatever I can while I'm on this earth to show people and teach people who Jesus is. I want to live for him, and I want to die to advance his message while I'm here on this earth. Why? Because that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, what do you call those guys? A soldier, and I'm a pilgrim just passing through. I have a mandate. It's an eternal purpose. It's an eternal cause. And Natalie and I, we have... We're connected to something eternal. We live for something greater than this earth ever will have to offer. And I think that's, that's the key component in our marriage and in our lives personally that has kept us grounded. Is that there's something that's not attached to this earth that we're a part of. And if you don't have that individually and you don't have that as a couple, let me encourage you to find something that's connected to eternity. And live and then pour your, your love into that place. Maybe it's here across. Maybe it's here with the children. Maybe it's when we open up our special needs. Maybe it's here in Seguin. You're wondering why you're here in Seguin? It's like, man, I don't belong here. Ah, which also leads me to this. You know what? Paul didn't belong there either in Philippi. He was on his way to Asia to go preach. That was plan A for him. Plan B was to go to Bithyn Bithynia. Plan C were these other cities. Philippi was like plan F, G, H. It was his, it wasn't his plan, but it was God's plan A. It was a detour. And a lot of times in the detour, we think it's destruction for us. It's destroying us. But actually the detour is the destination God has you on to fulfill everything he wants to fill in your life and in those that you're going to be a part of. Right? So like we said last week, when David prayed for his little sheep and his little, you know, animals, it seemed like God didn't answer those prayers because bears kept coming, lions kept coming. But when he faced Goliath, he realized like, oh, that was just target practice. <laughs> you're going through what you're going through because it's just target practice for what he wants you and what he's going to help you go through in the future and fulfill the destination that God has for your life. Stay steadfast, stay steady. We have Lisa here who came over and stayed the night. She used to be here, and she got out of God's will and left. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's who she is. She's, she's a very loud talker, I'm telling you. But I'm t I, love, I love how God's, one, allowed us to cross paths. And then here we are going full circle. Here we are again. But, man, I was happy in my heart because I know what Jesus did in her life. And she's staying steady and staying steadfast, locking in. Even though it was hard for a little while, man, she's locking back in. And she wants to fulfill all that God has for her life. Because she was a mess. You were. You were bad. But that's the beauty of Jesus. That's who he wants to do. He's the, Jesus is the foundation. Paul was consumed with Jesus. All he wanted to do was just live for him. Are you that way? What are you consumed with? Who's at the top of your list? Who's at the center of your world? For, G for Paul, Jesus was at the center of his world. You know, sometimes I think, I, I think about our angels. I mean, I think about Paul's angels. Man, those guys were all jacked up. My angels are all jacked up. They got, they're on their seventh pair of wing or whatever. It's like, oh shoot, he's still alive. What's gonna happen today? You never know. But some of our angels are bored. You wake up, are they going to get after it? Are they going to, no, they're just going to keep doing the same thing. How's your day go? Eh, bored. How's your day? Man, Marcus, are you kidding me? 
dude, I need help. <clears throat> Live in such a way, be consumed with Jesus in such a way that in the middle of your trial, joy is your choice. You will never let anything steal the thing that Jesus has put inside of you. You're just, there's just a, there's just a, what do you call that? A conviction in your heart. Because joy, it's not about getting what you want. It's appreciating what you already have. It's about gratitude, amen? And so for Paul, this church that was established was actually a detour. Thank God for closed doors. You might feel like you're here in the city because a door closed. Thank God for closed doors. It's not an accident. You're here by assignment. Embrace it. Reframe. What is it that you want me to do, God? (laughs) It's God's plan A. Embrace that. What we see as a detour is often your actual destination. So how do we land this plane? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Paul, many times, in the middle of the darkest moments, he praised his way out. He worshiped his way out. The spirit of heaviness, the darkness, the stuff that we face in life, the tendency is to to allow those things to bury you, to distract, destroy you. Uh, Those who are followers of Jesus and have evidence in their lives, they will take those moments and use them as opportunities to kick the gates of hell open and worship God in spite of what they're feeling. Paul did that in Philippi, the Philippian jailer. And at midnight, they threw him in jail because he was preaching this message. And he took that opportunity to worship him right in the middle of it while he was, you know, in the middle of, of midnight. And it was praise that busted the gates open. And so it is in your life. Because we don't, whatever we don't turn into praise will turn into pain. And so in the middle of your, you can hold fast to the pain or turn it and flip it into praise. Not, not for it, but in spite of what you're facing, I will still worship God. I think it's Habakkuk somewhere where it says, even though something never bears fruit, even though nothing blossoms, even though nothing goes right in my life, yet I will still praise him. I will still worship him. Amen because he is our everything. Natalie, one of the beautiful thing about Natalie, my wife, is that she is constantly sending songs to me. When we have our little tension, when we have our struggle, she sends songs. I'm like, I don't wanna listen to this song. I don't even wanna listen to you right now. (laughs) But she's always finding a song in the middle of her pain. This past week, she sent me a song. I'm like, I'm going to listen to it even though I don't want to because I don't like you right now. I love you, but I don't like you. And then I started reading the songs like, oh, I love you. <laughs> I got a front row seat to the madness. I picked up my phone every morning out of habit. I've been doing that for the drama. Yeah, I said it. I'm addicted to the rush. Need a medic. When I take a step back, I can see all the pain, all the fear we've been feeling. Losing sight of the thing that we're really needing Honestly, I just think we need Jesus. Go back to the author and finisher of our faith. The greatest joy I see in my wife's life, I was asking her today, it's like, hey, what, what's the greatest moment of joy you've ever experienced as a follower of Jesus? She couldn't put her finger on it. I was like, I know what, I, what it is for me. I was like, when I, whenever you saw, whenever the girls were born, when Aaron was born, I saw this deep thing that I can't describe that only a mom can have. Just a real sense of joy. Did you see our baby? I'm like, yeah, did you see our baby? She's blonde and blue eyes. <laughs> like, what the snappers? I'm not blonde. I'm a Mexican. <laughs> Come to find out, you know, my grandmother was German. She's real light complected. But um, right before all the joy of that moment, there was great pain. There was great pain. And as soon as the birth came, man, joy come and just overrid all the pain that she was going through, 18 hours of it because something beautiful was right there before her. And so it is in our lives. Jesus said, right now, you might be experiencing sorrow. You might think what you're facing is a detour. I don't know what you're thinking, but all I know is that right now, rejoice. And again, rejoice because he's got something special for you. Don't let anything or anyone take away the joy in your life. So how do we land this plane? What do we do? 
Thank you for asking. One, don't focus on losing your period. Find your praise. Number two, I know it's kind of weird, but anyways, joy is a choice. I have a choice today to smile, to maintain my joy regardless of what I face. Natalie and I, for, for a season, a while back, it's been a long time ago, uh, we were having too much tension and we decided to go and I said, you know what, let's just, let, I have an idea. Anytime we begin to stir up, stuff gets stirred up, one of us has to just start laughing. Let's just start, be joyful and laugh. It was horrible. It was fun, but it's like, oh, quit laughing. I'm serious. And we just, we just did it to break the tension. Why? Because we knew that the result was in the middle of tension, you'd look for optimism rather than fatalism. You'd look for opportunity. So we had, we had to pause and just laugh about it. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of, of, a, of a different, you know, a joyful moment of optimism, we could think better. We could see things better. It's like, man, this is really stupid stuff, isn't it? It's like, yeah. But it's really, you know, like little foxes that spoil the vine. We stopped doing that for a while. And um, maybe we need to start back up again. I'm not sure. But just laugh. Not at her or them, but laugh at the situation. Like, I know this situation. You're just trying to pull me away from God's purpose and plan for my life. I'll not allow that to happen. I will fulfill and develop the character in nature so I can reflect it here on this earth while I'm living. Amen? Because on this earth, I will live for him and I'll die to advance the gospel while I'm here. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, you are so good to us. We thank you that the things that you have spoken to us, you've spoken to us so that our joy could remain and be full. And so we choose to rejoice, Father God. We choose to rejoice this weekend. Uh, and again, we will rejoice regardless. I pray that you grace us, help us, Lord God, empower us by your spirit. We trust you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. Hey, this Wednesday, uh, we have Recharge again. I want to encourage you to come out because I have one of my, the first, one of the first worship leaders that we had here at Crossroads is a guy by the name of Mark McConkie. He was, uh, uh, he's from Ireland, uh, Belfast area. Man, the guy, I think he's a modern day psalmist. Um, and so he's going to be coming and leading us this Wednesday. I encourage you to come out. I think you'll be encouraged and blessed. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy yourself. Pay for somebody's meal or do something. God bless. Have a great week. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.